Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. I know that a lot of people prefer videos that are not longer than 8 minutes, but sometimes that is just not enough time to go into all the details. So I was thinking about splitting up this video into two or three smaller ones to deliver those short videos, but I think that this would tear the video and the topic apart, so I decided to do one long video that is structured in chapters and you can use the annotation links on the top of the video player to select a specific chapter. You then have all the info in one video and you can choose to skip a chapter or just watch one today, one tomorrow and so on. I think that this is the best approach for the kind of videos I make on my channel. Now, what is the topic of this video? As you've surely heard, the SLA announced that the Battlefield 4 support will continue in 2015, which is good news because many players were concerned that Battlefield 4 support ends once Hardline is released. So it seems that we will continue to get patches for Battlefield 4 in 2015. But we could get more than just patches. It looks like a few additional maps could also find their way into Battlefield 4, because the SLA has or had a poll where you could vote for your favorite Battlefield maps of all time. Based on a recent tweet from David Serland, who is the premium and CTE producer at Dice LA, it seems that they already picked the map or maps that they want to reimagine, or use as a template to build a completely new map. How many maps we will get and if these will be released all at once in one DLC is not clear. To me it seems that Dice LA still has to fight a little bit with Electronic Arts to get a budget that is as big as they want. And that is why there are currently no details about the scale of the additional content and I would also not expect to get details until early next year. So I do hope that we get 4 additional maps, but I also hope that it won't be a classic DLC. What I would like to have is to get these maps released separately bundled with a client patch. Similar to how we received 3 maps in Battlefield 2 and 2142 because this is then a nice steady stream of new content rather than one bomb that goes off and after that there is nothing. Which brings us to the question, who should receive these new maps? I sincerely hope that these maps will be free for everyone and free means that non-premium members will get them too because that is player appreciation. That is how DICE can compensate us for the horrible launch of Battlefield 4 with content that has value, not some stupid battle packs. There is no need to make this premium exclusive, because we knew from the start that with premium we basically pre-ordered 4 DLCs, which we could play earlier than non-premium members and we got these DLCs for a smaller price. So we got what we paid for and if these additional maps are premium only then this is not done to give the premium members more additional content, but this is then done to get more players to buy premium. So show us that you are really sorry for the bad launch of Battlefield 4 and give these maps to everyone in your community who decided to stick around for the entire last year. That would not only be fair, but that is also how you appreciate your community. So I'm not the first one to make a video about this topic and I'm sure that you have already seen a lot of videos from other people on YouTube showing you the maps that they would like to get ported to Battlefield 4. And the majority of these people seem to be focused on maps from Battlefield 3. But as you know, I don't do what other people do and that's most likely the reason why you watch my videos and put up with my funny accent. So because most of you know the maps from Battlefield 3 and most likely also the maps from Bad Company, I have decided to show you maps from a Battlefield game that many of you might have never seen or played. And that game is Battlefield 2. I also want to tell you a bit about the map design and the history of Battlefield, which I hope you will find interesting. So even if you have never played Battlefield 2, you might still know three of its maps. Strike at Karkand, Sharky Peninsula and Gulf of Oman. You might also know Wake Island, but that is a map that was first seen in Battlefield 1942 and that's why I will not spend too much time talking about it, since I want to focus on the original Battlefield 2 maps. So to bring back old maps in a new game is nothing new. DICE has done that in Battlefield 2, 2142, in Bad Company 2, in Battlefield 3 and in Battlefield 4. But were these reimagined maps always as good as the original or better than the original? The game design has a huge impact in how the map is played. Obviously the 3D spotting in Battlefield 3 as well as the faster pace greatly affected the gameplay on maps like Strike at Karkand, Sharky Peninsula and Gulf of Oman. 
So it is not that easy to have a map to be as awesome in the new game as it was in the original. But let's not look too much into the game design now and focus on the map design instead. Before we begin I have to ask you to do something that is incredibly hard to do and most players are not able to do. And that is to look at what is behind the graphics. Because the visuals is only the outmost layer. It is what receives the most attention because it is very prominent and eye-catching. But much much more important is what is behind the graphics. Because the defining factors of a map are not the textures, not the shaders and not the amount of triangles used in the models. It is the design of the terrain, the placement of roads, buildings and rocks, how the control points are arranged, how many of them there are and what kind of vehicles spawn at these control points. It is the design or plan behind the map that really matters. And that is the key factor which separates great maps from bad maps. So when I show you the Battlefield 2 maps then try to look at what is below that outermost layer, below the graphics. If you do that with old games where the graphics have not aged well then you can still see how good or bad the game mechanics and the map design behind the graphics are. And if you do that with a recent game that has killer graphics then you are able to identify all the flaws in the game and map design that are hidden behind the shiny graphics. But I know that I have a very smart audience so I'm sure that looking at the map design that is hidden below the graphics will be an easy thing to do for you. Now before I show you my suggestion of maps to bring to Battlefield 4 I want to talk a bit about the problems when you port a map from an old game to a new one. And I want to do that by having a look at one of the most popular maps in the history of Battlefield that has also been ported to Battlefield 3. And that map is Drycat Karkant. So it's been quite a while since I've last seen that map in Battlefield 3, especially without using SweetFX. And I have to say that I still have no idea how DICE could go with that art direction. The game would look so much better without the blur, the blue tint, the supernova-like lens flares and the bleached colors. That said, Strike at Karkant is still a very good looking map in Battlefield 3, but that's just the visual layer. What is behind it? First of all it has a nice amount of destruction, which is what every Battlefield 2 player was dreaming about back at the day. You could not bring down as many buildings as you can in Bad Company 2, but from a game design point of view this was okay. Now let's have a closer look at the Conquest large layout of the map. Here we have the following control points. The US main base, Hotel, Square, Suburb, Market, Train Accident, Gatehouse and the Warehouse. Only the US main base was an uncap and that kind of design is called Conquest Assault because one team can lose control of all their flags and when that happens then the players of the team are not able to respawn. This creates a very special dynamic for the game because you constantly need to make sure that you don't lose too many flags or the match can be over in a matter of minutes. A problem in the Battlefield 3 version of this map was that it was simply too small for 64 players. It just turned into a clusterfuck when the server got full and if you played on the side of the Russians then as soon as it got pushed to the right side of the bridge it became almost impossible to get back into the game. Playing on that side of the map was not fun in Battlefield 3. In my opinion this map plays a lot worse in Battlefield 3 than it does in Battlefield 2. And that is because the map has been changed quite a bit compared to the original. This here is the 64 player conquest layout of Strike at Karkand in Battlefield 2. And as you can see the map is quite a bit larger and has two additional control points on the right side of the map. So here we have the gatehouse, the cement factory, the warehouse and the factory which was the main base of the Middle East coalition. And since the original also uses the conquest assault design the Middle East coalition could lose control over their main base, the factory. So what kind of difference does this make? When we compare the areas left and right to the bridge then we see that each of them has four flags and nearly the same size. This means that there is more space for the 64 players so the map does not turn into a clusterfuck as easily as in Battlefield 3. And the right side of the map was still fun to play because it was much larger and you had the same amount of control points there as on the left side, which created a nice balance between these two sides of the map. 
Also the design of the cement factory added verticality to the game and players could use it for a lot of different tactics to either defend or attack that control point. The factory, which is the main base of the Middle East coalition, allows for a lot of tactical options, especially for the US players. What we did quite a lot was to rush to the factory and try to capture it at the beginning of the round, because then the Middle East coalition had to fight on two fronts. This is extremely fun for both teams, because it greatly increases the variety. The game is much more unpredictable and you need to try and anticipate much more what the other team will do. I played this map a lot, and I mean like several hundred hours, but it never became repetitive because of all the options you have, because of how unpredictable each match can be. So this design is what made the map so popular and the experience so enjoyable. Which raises the question why DICE made the map smaller in Battlefield 3. Back at the day I did ask that question in the EA UK forums, where one of the designers from DICE Stockholm had a topic in which you could ask him questions about Battlefield 3. So I asked Gustav Helling why the map has been made smaller in Battlefield 3 and the answer was that the map is better this way and no one ever played at the factory side of the map. If you played Strike at Karkand in Battlefield 3 and in Battlefield 2, then you know firsthand that this is not true. So if this really was the reason for DICE Stockholm to make the map smaller, then I just have no words for this. If the reason would have been limitations in the engine because of the destruction, then I could accept that. But that the reason was that the Battlefield 2 design was bad? That's just wrong. But there is more than just the size and the flag layout that makes this map better in Battlefield 2. So as I've mentioned before, Battlefield 2 did not have destruction, which means that if an infantry player decided to hide behind a building, then there was not much that you could do about that, even if you were sitting in a tank and that was quite frustrating. But what you could destroy were bridges, like the one between train accident and the gatehouse. Once you did that, you forced the team to take the road near the cement factory, which means that this had a big influence on the tactics. Battlefield 3 had Destruction 3.0, but you could not destroy bridges, not even the wooden bridges on Wake Island. In Battlefield 2 we could not only destroy these bridges, but also repair them. Taking that away from the maps in Battlefield 3 really reduced the tactical options and the variety of the gameplay. What you have surely also noticed is that fog we have here in Battlefield 2. Back at the day we were all dreaming about maps where you could see across the entire map. But once I played these Battlefield 2 maps in Battlefield 3 in the reimagined form, I realized how short-sighted that thinking was. One of the main reasons for that fog in Battlefield 2 was the less powerful hardware of the PCs, but that was not the only reason as you must not underestimate the tactical value of that fog, because it conceals your movement, which meant that as long as the enemy commander didn't place a UAV above your head, you could sneak around the enemy and try to flank him, or take his main base. So on maps that were quite flat, the fog was intentionally made thicker than the hardware limitations required to balance the gameplay and allow you to sneak around the other team. By removing the fog completely in Battlefield 3, the maps looked much better, but lost that tactical element entirely, and the 3D spotting just made it worse. Another good example is Sharky Peninsula, where in Battlefield 2 there is no direct line of sight between the two attack helicopter spawn points, where in Battlefield 3 you do have that direct line of sight, and as a result you get much more spawn killing on that map in Battlefield 3 than in Battlefield 2, because the players get much more attracted to that spawn point of the helicopter when you can see it. So in my opinion the classic maps that were ported to Battlefield 3 are a good example to show you how important it is to think about all the elements that can influence the gameplay when you port a map from an old game to a new one. Because it does not take much to greatly harm the gameplay on that map and make it let's say less awesome than it was in the original game. The only thing that I would change in the layout of Strike at Karkand is to give the US team a second way to exit their main base. Because when you push them back to that base, then it was almost impossible for them to get back into the game. Which means that the round could be quite boring at that point. Also the nade spam, especially around Hotel, was always extremely bad. But that has not much to do with the map design. So I only mention this because I know that some people will bring that up in the comments. One additional thing that I would like to mention is that we had three conquest layouts in Battlefield 2. One for 16 players, 
one for 32 players and one for 64 players, where in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 we only have Conquest and Conquest Large. To have three different layouts was very good to be able to run servers with different player counts and I really miss that in the Frostbite generation Battlefield games. So when a map gets ported or reimagined, then it is really essential that this version of the map works at least as good as the original one, otherwise this defeats the purpose of getting that old map to a new game. Now after we took a look at the map that was ported from Battlefield 2 to Battlefield 3 and the issues with porting a map from one game to another, I would like to show you four of my most favorite Battlefield 2 maps which have not been ported to one of the later Battlefield games. First one is Mashtur City. The original name of this map was Divided City and it was part of the Battlefield 2 reveal trailer. Originally it also included jets but DICE changed the map to make it focus on the infantry combat. The only air support you have is a transport helicopter which is a great way to quickly transport your troops across the map. So you could also sneak around the other team and capture their main base. Which was possible for both teams because this map uses a conquest double assault layout. So this means that both teams are at risk to lose their ability to respawn and that creates a very interesting dynamic because when that happens then it is quite hard to get back into the game. But if you manage to do that and even win the round then this is one of the most epic battlefield experiences that you can get. But if your team is full of campers that don't play the objective then the round can be over in a matter of minutes. And I really like that because playing the objective is the way Battlefield is meant to be played. Now when we look at the terrain then we see that it features quite a lot of different elevation levels. Which makes it very interesting to play because you have fights happening on different levels and these also help to conceal your movement and allow for a huge variety of different tactics. So even if your team was down to two flags there was still a way out. A chance to get back into the game because of how many routes you could take on that map. Mashtur City is one of those Battlefield 2 maps where I had really epic fights across the entire map. You could choose to head down directly to the mosque which was the boiling point of the map where both teams clashed together. Here you could also destroy the bridge which forced the vehicles to take a different route. Or you could go directly for the backyard and the tank that spawns there. And this is something I really like about the maps in Battlefield 2. The flags are not just spawn points with light vehicles. On some of them you get tanks, APCs, mobile anti-air and helicopters, which gives them more value. Which means that you have a strong incentive to capture that flag and to defend it, so that when you see the flag behind you gets captured, you actually turn around and fight for it. Another tactic that you could use on that map was to go around the map on the edge of the combat zone, destroy the commander assets and take the main base of the other team. This map is a real battlefield sandbox that is completely unpredictable and that is what makes it so fun to play because it does not get repetitive. This map has everything you need for really epic moments when you play as infantry, a pilot or a tank driver. If this map gets ported to Battlefield 4 then I would not do any changes to the original layout. Just add some real destructions and make more buildings accessible and that's it. And please, no levolution. We want real destruction that can be used to add variety to the gameplay and not some scripted event. Then there's Fuji Pass, a classic conquest map where both teams have main bases that cannot be captured. It is a really big map that features all kinds of vehicles including jets and helicopters. And for these we have runways and helipads in Battlefield 2. There is no in-air spawning as we have in Battlefield 4, which I really don't like. A fundamental flaw in the balance between air and ground in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 is that helicopters and jets have infinite ammo and can repair themselves. In Battlefield 2 none of that exists. You have limited ammo which means that you need to conserve your ammo and make sure to use it wisely. When you run short of ammo or out of ammo then you need to fly to an airstrip or a helipad to rearm and when you get damaged then you need to do the same for repairs. This causes that the ground forces are able to catch a break from the ongoing attacks by the aircrafts. In Battlefield 3 I could base raid the Russians the entire round on Kalg Island because I had infinite ammo and auto repair. 
This then led to players complaining about the helicopters and jets to be so annoying, because they could keep the hammer down on one area without having to worry about ammo and repairs. Also I'm not a big fan of the direct spawning into the vehicles, because now we have half the team sitting in a deploy screen, constantly clicking at the grayed out vehicle button. Not knowing how many other players are waiting too. Maybe some sort of queue system would help, but to be honest I simply prefer the old way, where you just walk up to a helicopter and get in. And I do that despite all the team killing that we had in Battlefield 2. Another aspect of limited ammo and no auto repair for helicopters and jets is that flags which have an airstrip or a helipad become very important. If you lose such a flag then you have a very good reason to try and get it back, because holding it meant that you weaken your enemy. A key design aspect of this map is the variation of elevation and the river in the middle of the map. We also have destructible bridges here that allow us to slow down the enemy team and using the boat on the river provided us fast transport, especially for the Chinese team. And it was a lot of fun to use. What I really like about this map is the terrain, because even though the map has a more linear design, it still is large enough for 64 players, allows you to choose many different routes and has a lot of tactical variety. This is a perfect map for vehicles, but as infantry player you could also have a lot of fun on that map, when using light vehicles for fast transport. If this map gets ported to Battlefield 4 then I wouldn't do any changes to the terrain and the flags. Thanks to the variation in elevation you can even go crazy on the viewing distance, as much as the hardware allows it. What would be great in this map for jets and helicopters are volumetric clouds, like we have seen in the final stand DLC. A little bit of destruction would be nice too, but I definitely do not want to see any form of large evolution event. Next one is Kubra Dam. This is my most favorite vehicle map and because of the level architecture it has been used for countless stunt movies. Kubra Dam is very heavy on the vehicle gameplay. Here you have everything. Tanks, APCs, attack helicopters, transport helicopters, DPV, mobile anti-air, two seat bombers and fighter jets. So if you were on foot then you were most likely playing as spec ops, blowing up commander assets and vehicles using your C4. Or you played as an engineer repairing your vehicles and placing mines. Or you played as anti-tank blowing the vehicles to pieces using your rocket launcher. The map uses a conquest assault design, so the Middle East coalition was at risk to lose its main base. Where the jets and helicopters spawn as well as the commander assets are located, so losing that flag was not an option. The map is really big and has a lot of very different elevation levels, which helps to conceal your approach and allows for many different tactics to attack and defend the control points. On this map you have tanks, APCs and mobile anti-air spawn at the flags, which means that controlling the points was essential to not have to drive your tanks all the way out from the main base to the battlefield. Also the lower dam was an essential control point, because it had an additional helipad. On Kubra Dam I had some of the most epic dogfights, helicopter battles and tank fights. If you want a map for vehicles then this is it. The variation in elevation and the shape of the terrain allows you to choose from a lot of different tactics, to attack or defend the control points and that is what I really love in Battlefield. Gameplay that is diverse and unpredictable. So I wouldn't change a single thing if this map gets ported to Battlefield 4. But just like with Fushi Pass it would be nice to see volumetric clouds, like we have in the Final Stand DLC. And what I don't want to see is any form of Levolution event. I want real destruction added that actually adds something to the gameplay and not have some scripted event that gets old after you have seen it a few times. And the last map I want to show you is Road to Jalalabad. This is one of the maps that we got for free in Battlefield 2. It was introduced in patch 1 for 1 and quickly became very popular, because it is actually quite similar to Strike at Karkand, as there are no helicopters and no jets, and the map focuses a lot on infantry combat and it is also designed as a conquest assault map. The viewing distance is also quite limited, but not as much as in Strike at Karkand, where we have something that is almost like a sandstorm. So similar to Karkand we have the US main base outside of the city and the base is an uncap. The Middle East Coalition's main base can be captured and the team will heavily defend this flag, because this is where the commander assets are located and where the tank spawns. 
you will see some really epic and hard battles around this flag. Inside the city you always had to keep an eye on those rooftops because you could be sure that there was someone on one of these roofs. The hotel was a flag that we always pushed very hard for when we were on the US team because we then had a good point to push for the remaining flags. At the market you were very exposed so that was a flag where you always had to expect to get horribly murdered while you tried to capture it. So Road to Jalalabad is one of my most favorite infantry heavy maps in Battlefield 2. It does not offer as much freedom as Mashtar City does, but the fights in the streets and on the roofs was still a ton of fun and the map offered enough tactical options for you so that it would not get boring and repetitive even if you played that map a lot. If the map gets ported to Battlefield 4 then the only change I would make is to have some sort of cover between the US main base and the city. Because the actual road to Jalalabad could quickly turn into a death trap in Battlefield 2 if the Middle East coalition managed to push the US team back to its main base. You could still try and sneak out at the edge of the combat zone and try to cross the lake, but that was a quite hard thing to do in that case because some people of the other team were already waiting there. So a little bit uh, more cover which could be realized in form of an elevation change could really help there. I would also continue to use the same viewing distance to conceal the player movement. If you would increase the viewing distance then I fear that this map could very easily turn into a sniper nightmare. Just add some real destruction and make the buildings accessible and that's about it. And as I said for all the other maps, please no revolution events. We want real destruction that can be used to add variety to the gameplay and not have some scripted events. So these are the maps that I would like to see ported to Battlefield 4 and the reason why I would choose Battlefield 2 maps is because I want to be able to make my own path. I don't like maps where I always take the same route, where playing the map feels like running between the same flags on the same path all the time. I want tactical variety, I want different elevation levels, I want gameplay that is diverse, where I have to adjust my tactic to a new situation and where even after I played the map to death I can still get into situations that require me to choose a new tactic and to do something differently. I also want control points that are more than just spawn points. They must have extra value which makes it worth to die for while defending it or push really hard to capture it. That is what Battlefield is really about. That is what attracted me to the franchise in the first place. So I hope that this video did help you to get a better understanding of the map design in Battlefield 2. And if one of these maps gets remade instead of one of your favorite Battlefield 3 maps, then I can understand that you will be sad about it, but I hope that after this video you are looking forward to play a classic map and experience Battlefield in a new way. So if you are looking forward to play Battlefield 2 maps in Battlefield 4, then give this video a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.